I've not even started this video and it's already gone horribly wrong. I've got these uh, little traditional vintage -y. I say vintage, they're new, but they're based on a sort of vintage design, one of the first glow-in-the-dark sort of plugs, the nightlight plugs. And uh, it's got neon indicators in it instead of the more modern sort of LED version. And I thought, I'll plug it into the parameter, I'm not really expecting much, uh, it's not going to give an accurate reading, it's way too low for it. And then, I tried pulling it back out again. And it's not coming out, it is absolutely locked in. And the reason I think for that is because, is it going to come out? I think it's the earth pin that's actually locked it. And we're going to find that out if I can prise this out, there it goes, to see if it's chaffed in any way. What's chaffed? Nothing is really chaffed. I think it's just been gripping it. I would have thought that would have left some sort of mark. Uh, but I think it's the plastic earth pin that just uh, stuck in that. I don't see anything else here it's likely to really have been sort of dragging. But anyway, back onto the subject in hand now, I've rescued it. This is a little neon glow indicator lamp, and if we open it up, it's very simple inside. Now, when I was a kid, I remember uh, finding these in a sort of hardware shop in East Kilbride, and I just thought they were great. I bought quite a lot of them and then started modifying them and trying to put as many neons inside as I could. Until one of them went bang quite dramatically one day because I jammed too many neons in. Let's see if I can just nudge the brightness up a wee bit here. That's better. Let's nudge it up to the point it just starts going horribly out, washed out. So, uh, yeah, the circuitry is super simple, though. It uses the type of neon indicators you find in sort of those orange glow power-on switches. Here we have it. Uh, let's nudge that back down again so you can actually see what's in there. So we get two neon indicators in series with a resistor. Let me just doodle that down. It's not much of a schematic, but you know, it's a schematic. So we've got live, we've got neutral, and we've got one neon indicator, a resistor, and then another neon indicator. And these are just uh, glass vials filled with uh, neon gas with an electrode. The resistor, the colour code for it is blue, grey, orange, which is 6, 8 and 3 zeros, so 68k. Now, in, if you're in a country with a 120 volt supply, I'm not sure if this lamp would work. I think you'd actually have to skip one of these. This You'd have to get rid of one of the neons and just have a resistor and the neon on its own, just one neon lamp. Or for the extra brightness, you might have to use two resistors and two neons. You couldn't uh, put two neons on like that with one resistor because... Um, only one of the neons would light, because what happens, uh, the neon indicators, they have what's called a strike and a hold voltage, and it's the, if you were to increase the voltage up um, slowly, it would the neon would suddenly strike at, say, 100 volts, say 90 to 100 volts, and then it would suddenly drop down to about 50 volts, and that would be the sort of holding voltage. And then if you lowered the voltage uh, down, if you started ramping it back down again, when it got down below the 50 volts, it would suddenly cut off again. So um, if the two in series here requires this about a combined voltage of about 180 volts to actually strike in the first place. So that's why um, you can't put, uh, you wouldn't be able to really use this in a lower voltage supply, and, but you could use a single neon. <clears throat> but with, in the case of running two in parallel of the neon indicators, as soon as the first one of them, they'll have slightly different voltage ratings. As soon as the first one reaches a strike voltage, if the voltage in the sine wave is rising up, as soon as, say, this one struck across, um, then it would clamp the voltage down to about 50 volts when it did that, and only one of them would light. That is the principle behind the the, um, the Nixie flowers. But um, it's nice to see these that are still being sold, and if you look at the date code, it says 25 6, 6, 2016. So 25th of June 2016, that's quite neat that they're still making these. And also nice that they're not riveted together, you can actually open them. So um, you could do what I did in the past, you could get the different colours of neons, or you could just rip it all out, because uh, you can pop these pins out. The pins, once they're pressed in and the lid's screwed on, it's this back, these posts at the back that hold those in. But you could uh, fit other circuitry in there. I did, uh, I did that in the past. I, when blue LEDs first came out, I made uh, some uh, little decorative blue LED ornaments for friends, little wearable LEDs with tiny little nickel metal hydride battery packs, and I made them some really dodgy uh, resistor dropper uh, based uh, chargers uh, with the strict instructions don't poke the pins sticking out the top because you'll get a shock. 
Yeah, that's that's how safe they were, but they they kind of knew to expect something like that from me. And it was current limited, so it was relatively safe. But um, yeah, it's, it's quite nice. I'm just really delighted to see that they still sell things like this because they're so super simple and they work and they just last forever. I mean, the neon indicators, when they run at a low level, will just last for decades. So it, it's as nice as an alternative to the complex LED ones just to see a nice, simple, orange neon one.